Good morning and welcome to Today on Saturday. I'm Tracy Grimshaw. Coming up soon on the program, we'll meet Sheikh Ahmed Didat, the Muslim missionary who chose Good Friday to deliver a message many Christians regard as an affront. First this morning to a story that has scandalised local church leaders this Easter weekend. Sheikh Ahmed Didat is a South African Muslim missionary who's in Australia to deliver a provocative message in his lecture, Easter, a Muslim Viewpoint. In a country that prides itself on the right to free speech, it is not the content of his lecture that's caused a front, it's the timing. Sheikh Didat delivered his speech on the most solemn day of the Christian calendar, Good Friday. Sheikh Didat joined me earlier. Good morning to you. Good morning, ma'am. What's the purpose of your visit to Australia? My purpose is to educate my people, as well as the Christians in this country, in regards to our relationship with Christianity because Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith for its followers to believe in Jesus. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus. See, the bulk of mankind, the non-Muslims, they do not know that in this holy book of ours, the Holy Quran, is enshrined Jesus Christ. That in this vast volume, you know, Muhammad, the so-called author of this book, the Quran. He is mentioned far less time than Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ in this book is mentioned 500% more times than Muhammad. But you don't believe that the Christian version of what happened at Easter is that the is correct true. version? That is true. What, so what's your that, version? No, no. So he says now, number one, that people don't know that we believe in Jesus as one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe in his miraculous birth which many modern-day Christians, including the bishops of the Anglican Church, they don't believe today, but we believe. We believe that Jesus was the Messiah, translated Christ. And we believe that he gave life back to the dead by God's permission, and he healed those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. And we believe that God took him up, and he's coming back. Now, all this the Christian doesn't know. He only knows that, no, we disagree with what we disagree with. Says now, says now, what is the reason? Why is it that we want to be different? We want to be funny? What makes the Muslim different from the Christian? But you don't believe that Jesus died and was resurrected right, at Easter. Right, right. So we say the Christian is boasting that on these three days, these eventful days, the passion of Jesus, there were 300 Old Testament prophecies fulfilled on this day. But I'm telling them that the one that got away, you see, in fishing, I'm an angler, and when we talk, we talk about the one that got away. The one that got away, the one that was not fulfilled. Now, I am here to educate people about the one that got away. And, and you will upset Christians, though, won't you? You must, I suppose, concede See, that. My motive is to educate. But can I, can I put to you, if we could just concentrate on, on this one particular issue at the moment, yes. can I put to you that it will be considered insensitive by many Christians that you have chosen Easter to come and deliver this message? No, no. I, I had no plans whatsoever. Some months ago, they were asking me for a blank slot that I have in my programs. So, so it's a coincidence so it, it, that it's it, it Easter. Is a, it, it's unbelievable. It's un that very, my very first major lecture happens to be on Good Friday. Extraordinarily it's unbelievable. It's extraordinary. But coincidences do happen. But now, to me, this is the most appropriate subject for the day. Let's say on Christmas Eve, on, on Christmas Day, the birth of Jesus, we are supposed to celebrate. I'm talking about the passion of Jesus. You know, what happened to him and how he died and then they, they uh, beat him up. No, doesn't make sense. All it right. doesn't make sense. When you talk about Easter at Christmas time, it doesn't make sense. You no. talk about Easter, Easter time. All right, well, let's say at Ramadan, right. the Pope goes to Tehran and right. says, you've got it all wrong. Right, okay, come. Well, how talk. would he be no, received? No, his Pope, His Holiness, yes. Just coincident that you, look, you mentioned his name. He has just written a book called Crossing the Threshold of Hope. It had become the world's bestseller in 12 countries immediately on publication. In this, he says, we must have a dialogue with the Muslims. So, suppose it's a coincidence that Ramadan is the occasion when he happens to be in Tehran and we are having a dialogue. He says, now look, you people, man, you're killing yourself. Who the Pope will reason with us. He says, you know, you Muslims, you pray five times a day every day of the year. Then, you know, that whole month of Ramadan, you're going to go through hunger and thirst. Because from before sunrise to sunset, the Muslim, no eating, no drinking, no sniffing, no smoking. So what kind of life are you people leading? Is your God hungry for that? 
Is your God hungry for your prayers? Is he hungry for your fasting? He says no. Now he has a right. He has a right to say, look, there is an easy way. Can I ask you this? Are you expecting trouble on your visit to Australia? Because you, I notice you have two bodyguards in the studio here. No, I, this is the first time in my life. I don't know Australia. You know, this is, this is a rough country or like the old cowboy days. I don't know. You know, the cowboys and crooks we see in films. I thought maybe this vast continent, please, please forgive me. <laughs> please forgive me. As Australia I, has enshrined in its democracy freedom of no, speech, no, Sheikh. No, I, I don't I think that... I don't know. I, see, I experience it very much. I appreciate it very much. But you know, you don't know, man, you don't know what's going on. Like when I go to America, the West, I don't know there's a cowboys and cooks are still around you know, with, the, with the guns ready to, for blazing away. Can I ask you this? Why, do, do you believe that we must all worship the same God? I mean, we don't all eat the same food. We don't all speak the same language. Why must we all worship the same God? Why isn't there no, room no. for us all to differ? No, no. We can, we, are, we must tolerate each other. This points of views, differences. But everybody is aiming to get a consensus. Everybody. The Christian wants the whole world to be Christianized. True or false? Look at the present moment. There are 35,000 crusaders occupied in Africa, raising the dust. Not priests, ministers of the church, but crusaders from America, they want to change the continent. They want to make Africa a Christian continent. In 1977, in Indonesia, there were 6,000 crusaders trying to convert the Indonesians. And they have succeeded so far in converting 15 million Indonesians into Christianity. And by the turn of the century, they want to make Indonesia a Christian nation. Now, this is an aim, a noble aim, from the Christian point of view. Similarly, now, since Christianity is a missionary religion, Islam also is a missionary religion. As much as the Christian is out to share his faith with the rest of mankind, we also want to share our faith with the rest of mankind. And Islam, I don't know whether you know, is the fastest growing religion in the world. Oh. In the West, in Britain, there are more Muslims than Methodists. All right. I still think there'd be plenty of people who'd question your timing, but thank you for your time this Pleasure. morning. Pleasure. A controversial South African Muslim missionary visiting Australia has found reason to thank his critics. Sheikh Ahmad Didaj says those who've criticised the timing of his first Australian lecture have done him an enormous favour. One opponent, the head of the Wesley Mission, says an anticipated attack on Christianity on Good Friday is scandalous. As he embarks on his first Australian tour, Sheikh Ahmed Didat says he hopes to educate Muslims about Christianity and Christians about Islam. This is Good Friday, what they're talking about, these things didn't happen. And my proof is from the Bible itself. The timing of the first public rally so on Good Friday at Sydney's Town Hall has created a storm. Holiday. Can you imagine if Christians hired the Sydney Town Hall to deny that Muhammad was a prophet, to attack the Koran and to disbase Islamic faith in the middle of Ramadan, what would happen? I'll tell you what, I would have to join Selman Rushdie. Tour organisers say they hope Reverend Moyes will meet the Sheikh to discuss the differences between the two religions. But we are not attacking, we just want to explain whether you believe or do not, it is up to you. The Sheikh believes Reverend Moyes has done him a great favour. Look, if he had ignored me, your newspapers and your radios and your TVs would have never known that did that had come and gone. The New South Wales Ecumenical Council declined to comment on this sensitive matter, saying it does not want to inflame the relationship between Christians and Muslims, particularly at this holy time. While the Australian Federation of Islamic Councils welcomes Sheikh Ahmed Didat's visit, but are disappointed that it clashes with their annual congress. Plans for a Muslim lecture to be held at the Sydney Town Hall on Good Friday have sparked a religious row. South African Muslim leader Sheikh Ahmed Didat has offered Christian church leaders the chance to join the theological debate. But they've rejected it because the event coincides with one of the holiest days in the Christian calendar. 78-year-old Sheikh Ahmed Didat has taken on religious leaders throughout the world, arguing the teachings of Islam with evangelists like Jimmy Swaggart. We are not taking you know, exception to that because this is, you are not used to the, our names. But it's the timing of his Easter visit that's upset Christian church leaders. The Sheikh has made a booking on Good Friday at no less a venue than the Sydney Town Hall to argue the Islamic view that Jesus was a prophet but not the Son of God. 
It's out of love and respect that the Christian says Jesus is God. And out of love and respect, we say Jesus is not God. But the head of Wesley Mission claims the Sheikh is being insensitive. He is due to speak on Good Friday, the most holy day in the Christian calendar. That is a very offensive approach to Christians. Mr Didat admits the two faiths have fundamental differences, but believes public debate will lead to greater tolerance. In this vast volume, the name Muhammad occurs only five times. Jesus occurs 25 times, 500 percent more times the name Jesus occurs. He is the king of kings. Reverend Moyes has been invited to take the stage with the Sheikh during his Good Friday address. It's an invitation the Reverend has declined. A war of words has erupted this Easter between Sydney's Christian leaders and a visiting Islamic scholar. The Christians are outraged that the Muslim missionary has chosen to hold a public rally today. But this Easter has seen a religious war of words over a visit by a leading South African Islamic missionary. It has Christian leaders hopping mad. What's incensed Christian leaders about the visit of this Islamic scholar, quite apart from the message itself, is the timing of the event. Christians are incensed that Sheikh Ahmed Didat has chosen Good Friday, a Christian festival, to launch his public rally. Could you imagine what would happen if the Christians of the community took the Sydney Town Hall in the middle of Ramadan and started to deride Muhammad and indicate that the Quran is incorrect? But the man at the centre of the storm, Sheikh Ahmed Didat, doesn't know what all the fuss is about. To me, it is childish. By God, it is childish. I don't want to go deeper into that. This is, it's no sense. The Catholic and Anglican Easter messages centred on trust, violence and our descent into savagery. Progressively, we are becoming an arrogant, ruthless, bullying society and that is not our inheritance. We develop thicker and thicker hides to protect ourselves and as we lose trust, we lose hope. 